I'll keep going. So similar to MTO, MTO is typically involved when there is, of course, a provincial involvement that needs to be taken into account for permitting uh, process. But if your project is in the center of Toronto or Ottawa or Kingston, you really don't need to involve MTO. Your only stakeholder or approver of the study is the city or the jurisdiction itself. And you will need to follow their TIS guidelines as well. So city of Toronto, which is a large municipality, they do have a set of two guidelines that work and go in hand in hand with each other. One of them is the TIS guideline, and the other is guidelines for using Tinker 9, including Send Traffic. To be able to find these guidelines, all you need to do is just quickly search um, Toronto TIS guidelines. And it's pretty much the first link. So you'll be able to find the guidelines. They are very similar to how um, MTO guidelines are written, but uh, with uh, mainly a focus on how, what the study should include. The parameters for using Synchro can be found in the, if you Google search um, Toronto Synchro parameters or guidelines, this is the first thing that comes up, and that's basically the guidelines for using the software. The, the big difference between Toronto and other jurisdictions, Toronto dives into a lot of details on how you can calibrate your model. Um, and they do have guidelines into running SIM traffic runs through Synchro. Uh, not going to dive into the details of that, but uh, feel free to read through, ask questions uh, later on. These should be very, uh, like I'm not expecting you to, to actually go and, and memorize every single thing in here or know every single thing or requirement, but be able to find out if you need to know the uh, sizes of detectors that you need to use in your um, modeling software, um, where you can find that. This is something you can find in this document. What are the um, calibration requirements for, um, the, for the uh, model that you're developing? You can find that here. For Toronto, of course, what are the um, requirements for um, clearance, uh, minimum initials, and stuff like that? All of these are uh, settings or that are detailed in the Synchro guideline. Honestly, if I have a project in Toronto, I would actually use this guideline if I'm using VSUM as my uh, software, because a lot of these are common things between different uh, modeling software or um, analysis tools. You will always have detectors and actuate, at actuated signals, whether it's a synchro thing, a recent thing, or a dynamic thing, or, a, or any other software. Of course, that is capable of uh, simulation. All right, that covers uh, Toronto. If I move on to a much, much smaller municipality, which is the other side of the extreme, uh, such as the city of Kingston, if you do the same thing. Uh, Kingston CIS guidelines. Uh, well, uh, their guidelines are like uh, four pages, which is really good. But the smaller the municipality, the less restrictive are the guidelines are. So um, very similar to how MTO lays uh, out their guidelines. Um, for example, in Kingston, the uh, critical uh, volume to capacity ratio, unlike MTO, is one. It's not 0.85 and it's not 0.75. The uh, guidelines will tell you as well what you can use for, for resources. Um, Kingston's or small municipality will not have all the information detailed in their guidelines, similar to Ottawa or similar to um, Toronto. And the jurisdictions such, such as Kingston uh, do have their own development applications website. You need to uh, search for, the app, for their applications. You need to search for their TMP. Um, and, and these are not, may not necessarily be mentioned here, but because of the most experienced professionals know where to find the information, they would okay, go to the city's website and try to search for the city's uh, transportation master plan. So they can know, for example, what are the projects that are happening in the future, and that may coincide with my study area and within my time horizon. So I can include them in my study as well. Um, moving on to uh, a couple of examples from the West, such as Calgary and Edmonton, um, similar story, if you just search City of Calgary, yeah, 
nice guidelines. Ah, okay. And I can use the excuse of English not being my first language. Okay. So if you open up the first link, uh, basically it gets downloaded, but uh, I attached a link where you can open this from the city's website in the uh, notes section. So very similar um, to NTO and uh, Toronto's general guidelines, um, goes into an introduction, format the process, um, the technical information, the parameters that you need to use in Synchro, for example, are detailed in, in Calgary. Calgary is relatively a medium-sized jurisdiction, roughly about a uh, million and uh, 100,000 people in population. And the same goes to Edmonton and the same applies to Ottawa. Those are around the million range um, of population. The, it would be very interesting to see how different they are when they're dealing with different um, actually uh, uh, transportation aspects, such as, for example, active modes. Active modes are not a high thing or a high a very, uh, well, it's not something we do emphasize a lot with NTO stuff, of course, given the nature of NTO studies, but a lot of other jurisdictions do not dive into analyzing the level of service of pedestrians. Actually, none does, actually. I, don't, I, I know Toronto does not. The, it's mainly uh, vehicle-based. It's mainly, if I'm not mistaken, Ottawa and York region um, at this time who have multimodal guidelines and can quantify level of service based on device. All right, so generally Calgary does have um, classifications for active modes for, for um, pedestrians at intersections. Um, it, uh, Calgary asks you, it's, uh, this is not a very high, um, highly active pedestrian location, just add in 10 pedestrians and five bikes per hour per approach. Uh, if it's uh, medium or low impact, more or less, you increase that a bit. If it's uh, moderate and uh, more pedestrian active area, you increase that uh, a bit more. Uh, I've had um, LRT projects where I've had to increase that to the 75 to 100 range in Calgary before. But generally, you can uh, you will see the general um, technical requirements as well in the, in the study. The uh, biggest uh, actually component that we focus on if we're dealing with a, a Calgary PIS is basically their synchro guidelines which show you uh, they are displayed in appendix B and show you the different parameters that you need to implement in the software while analyzing your conditions or your site. Similar story applies to the city of Edmonton. And City of Edmonton does have a bigger document. The biggest difference between City of Edmonton guidelines and City of uh, uh, Calgary and others is, of course, the uh, uh, formatting, <laughs> for sure. Uh, but as well, the City of Edmonton does have their own uh, residential and commercial rates, uh, trip generation rates. So if you do have one of the um, uh, land uses that are detailed in this guideline, you will need to use those rates in place of ITE or the Institute of Transportation Engineers. If you don't find your rates here, then you would use ITE. Um, I do believe, yeah, it's in Appendix D1. So if we do jump to that. All right, so you'll find that the city of Edmonton does or did collect some data for their low density residential housing, such as townhomes and uh, My apologies, guys. It seems that the time limit for phone uh, connections is, is about an hour. I'll have to check that with IT. 
Uh, but uh, hopefully, sound is back in. Okay. So, the city of Edmonton did um, generate their, or um, this, they did collect uh, studies on, on their residential um, tribunation rates depending on the uh, land use density and, and type. So, if you're uh, talking about low residential density, um, they have developed their own rates and measured it accordingly. For row housing, such as townhomes, um, you, they are using uh, IT trip rates. For apartments, the city did collect their own data. Um, and similar story applies for uh, commercial land uses. So um, they, they do have uh, specific land uses that uh, they have used. But again, if you don't find the land use uh, of your concern here, you straight ahead go to um, the Institute of Transportation Engineers uh, Tribunation Manual. So this, the IT manual is really a three volume book. I believe it's beyond a thousand page of different land uses. You cannot cover all of this in a city database. Um, you can, but of course, uh, after spending a lot of uh, money and resources. Okay, 